Welcome, everybody. We have another edition of Summa Social Elite, hosted by yours truly, Donna Newman of Summa Social. Jim is away on assignment. So after our time together today, I'll be posting this webinar in the Summa Social Elite Facebook group in case you want to refer back to any of the ideas. Today's topic is five common pitfalls of a successful Facebook launch. And see if you've overlooked any of these five core launch strategies and then apply them for your results. So let's get right to it. Facebook marketing, when done right, can obviously increase your leads, attract highly targeted prospects, and position you as a sought after industry leader. And after all, with 61% of Americans turning to the web for online advice and information, the penetration of the internet, the mobile devices, and social media are really changing the way Americans search and consume. Yet, to reap these business building benefits that we all obviously want to accrue, our team at Summa Social has identified five gut check action strategies to set up a vibrant community of raving Facebook fans who, let's just say, will happily spread the word about your small business. So here's what we're going to be learning today. We're going to be first talking about linking your profile to your business page. And with this insight, you'll never miss an opportunity to cross-brand your personal profile with your business page. And that's often a question clients give me. How do I ask my friends to like my business page? And this is a very intuitive and very uh, forward way to do it. Second, add a strong call to action. And then third, we're going to follow up with some conversations. And this is where connecting and responding with these fans can really build your trust in your brand. And fourth, think strategy for your timeline cover and your welcome app. Not just set it and forget it and, and it's going to come, but let's think about what are the keywords behind it. And, and this is more than just a pretty face. And then fifth, let's review your insights because Facebook marketing is not a set it and forget it kind of tool. As some of you listening may know, early in my career, I worked in the marketing department for an internationally renowned heart surgeon, Dr. Dietrich. And just before we launched every big marketing project, he would always caution us with these words. He would say, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing, meaning that as you start any marketing campaign, be it traditional, digital, or social media, there are always four objectives that will help you achieve your company's main thing within that campaign. And at Summa Social, it's what we refer to as design, so your brand stands out, invite your targeted audience, engage to stay top of mind with clients and targeted prospects, and then finally convert, which begins by building relationships to gain customers, repeat customers, and even raving referrals. Today, we're going to focus on the five common pitfalls of a successful Facebook launch, which really falls under the three categories as we have circled, design, engage, and convert. And we'll be featuring the dental industry See if you've overlooked any of these five core launch strategies and then apply them for your own results. The first one is link your profile to your business page. And Facebook is a great soft sell. You can be personal without being presumptuous. If your business page shows a dentist who's enthusiastic, engaged, and well-informed about the cutting edge technologies and who shares that insight in a mentoring fashion, then prospects and clients will recognize you as a leading dental team. And it doesn't matter what your industry is. It's if you do those same core values, you will be seen as a leader within your industry. So to that end, don't overlook linking your profile to your business page. And first, let me clarify that you know that you're on your profile when you see a list of friends. You see this little icon up here in the top right, or you see over there as the like button. So let's get started. To link your Facebook page from a profile, you want to do the following. 
first you're going to see right here, he is a dentist, and obviously he's misspelled his, his uh, ownership there. But here he is a dentist, and in this yellow highlight area, this is a hyperlink to his business page. So the first thing that you're going to do in order to achieve this is you are going to click on the about. The about is a hyperlink, and you will find it underneath your timeline, directly underneath your profile pic, where the red arrow is. And once you click on that, that refreshes the page and brings you in where you now are in edit mode. And you want to go in there and type in the exact name of your Facebook page. And then what happens is it appears in a drop down menu. You click on it, and then it automatically fills this field with a hyperlink to your business page. And most people actually overlook this. And when they don't have it linked, and I would come to his page, it will actually show me what's called a suitcase page. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you have this as a missed opportunity, nobody can find where your business page is. And that is what nine out of 10 people do. So you really want to take advantage of taking a few minutes. Oftentimes, when I set up my clients, um, we do this. But if it hasn't been done for you, it is a cinch to be able to do. And it's one of the biggest advantages that you can give by allowing people, fans, friends, clients to be able to click on that hyperlink in your about section and easily then be drawn into the connection to your business page. Then let's look at the second pitfall that a lot of clients fall into. Add a strong call to action. <clears throat> you got to ask yourself, can prospects easily find out how to access my services or buy my products? And over the years, we found many clients with an existing Facebook page, but they don't have a strong call to action. So by adding keywords, and these keywords are the very words people would use inside of a search engine like Google, Bing, or Yahoo, to pull up your content. So keywords, that's kind of a specialty in and of itself. But once you know those keywords, you want to populate it in here, add a call to action, which means you want to tell them what to do, and then you want to add high priority links, which would include your business page, your website, your Twitter site, maybe your blog. And that way, you turn this about section that is identified right here with this hyperlink into a powerful opportunity to bring the, the prospects into customers. So when you're filling this out, overall be as complete as possible. And here's an effective approach. Whenever you are looking uh, at filling out this info tab, you're going to be seeing fields that contain important descript descriptive metadata about your field. And that's a fancy way of saying that when you populate it with keywords, text, and links, that increases the content score of your Facebook page for the popular search inside of Facebook. And then examples of that would be address, your city, your state, your zip code. Those are important fields for local searches within Facebook. And then you look at what's called the company overview fields, mission, products, and a few of the other ones that are identified. And those are your product searches. So when you fill those up, not only is it assisting you to rise to the top of the search within Facebook, but those very keywords, those links, those short tail keywords are what can actually pull you up in an outside search by being Yahoo and Google. And then after you've gotten all that kind of scientific stuff populated, you want to think of some call to action because people are obviously engaged by words, and there's no way to add images in these fields. But the call to action would be something like discounts, promotions, contests. And when you couple that with a live link to your custom Facebook welcome page or your website, you have more engagement. And then, then they actually are doing something. And just a heads up that the specific fields Will, will vary according to the category you chose for your page when you first created it. Meaning that some people choose local business, some people choose brand, some people choose public figure. 
And depending upon the type of category that you did choose for your page, this call to action link might be pulled, which is a benefit, to your wall for additional exposure. And you're going to see that right here with Dr. Rawson's. His, his setup, I believe, is a brand as opposed to a Dr. Carol, and hers is a local business. Oftentimes, realtors choose a local business, and sometimes they choose a brand. But either way, you can see that the profile layout now has changed. So Dr. Rawson has an opportunity, I think it's about 175 characters, but anyway, it's three lines, and he has the ability to put a hyperlink in there and a strong call to action, and this is seen, as you can see here, underneath the profile pic, and then this is the top banner, but when people come to his page for the very first time, they see his value proposition, and this is a bit.ly link to his custom landing page. That is a pretty powerful layout. However, if he did not have that and he had Carol's, she has all of her local information, which is important for a local storefront or a small business owner like a realtor. And all of these too often are not filled out correctly. So if you primarily office out of home, but you might have a, a broker's address, I would go ahead and put that in here. Maybe not putting your home address, just trying to be secure, but go ahead and make sure that you've got your hours listed, you've got a contact information, and this allows you to be able to have an immediate opportunity for people, should they be interested in working with you, talking with you, to immediately pick up the phone and dial it. So whether the call to action appears only in the about section, which is after someone has clicked uh, what's inside of this yellow circle, which is hyperlinked, Either way, a flash promotion via a link can help you gain a loyal client at a minimal expense compared to traditional marketing. So kind of think of Facebook, especially in this area, it's like your waiting room. It's an extension of your waiting room. And when you treat patients or prospects on Facebook as you do your offline patients, then fans perceive you as trustworthy and they have an immediate value for knowing how you can help them. Moving into number three, we're going to be looking at following up with conversations. And to reap the benefits of Facebook marketing and to really achieve the desired impact on your practice, you must devote time to following up with conversations by your fans. But with the new timeline applied to Facebook pages, it's easy to overlook those conversations unless you apply a little strategy and kind of know some tricks behind it. Namely, view your page as posts by others rather than the default highlights. And let me show you. First of all, let me just kind of step back a second. Marketing now has slightly changed. Well, let's just say it's dramatically changed. Normally, traditional marketing has been what's called an outbound marketing, whereby it's full of business cards, it's brochures, it's flyers. It is radio, it is television, it is newspaper, and that's a push of content out there where you are branding yourself as the entity of choice. But now how marketing has changed a lot due to social media, but, uh, but also social media has changed because our economy has changed. People have different expectations. They don't want to be told what to do. They want to be, in, they want to be listened to. They want to be engaged with. And now as marketers, we can't just push out our content, we have to pull it back. So it's a push out, but we have to pull it back, meaning that when we say we're the best, we have to wait to listen to what their needs are relative to what we're the best at. And if their needs fit with what we're the best at, we pull it back and we then craft our message so that we are not begging or buying or bugging for attention anymore. We're actually earning it. And so this pie chart shows you that the outbound, which is traditional marketing, has become less effective and, and done uh, less intentionally as much as the social media and the digital marketing, which is that two-way conversation street, is now doing. So kind of as you begin to do any marketing, always think of, if I start with a traditional piece like a flyer, 
how can I bake a little bit of digital and a little bit of social media into it so that you don't look at those three sectors as separate? Well, you can add a QR code, which is now digital. You can then power that QR code with the YouTube video. That's social media. And on the YouTube video, you can say, like my business page and be entitled to a certain percentage off, a buy one, get one, a free ebook, an opportunity to get a local restaurant coupon, et cetera. And so now you've taken your traditional piece and you've you've added a QR code, which is digital, and you've baked it and hyperlinked that QR code with a social media engagement. And you will have a lot more success because of that. But kind of going back to how do you now never miss a conversation of the people who are actually engaging on your page? You can see here that when you look at this, the highlights is what first comes up. But then you want to click that drop down, and the highlights are of your own page's posts versus page by by um, post by others. And when you click on that post by others from the drop down of highlights, you're now going to see everybody who has at tagged your page or written on your wall via a comment, a like, or share, or actually engaged with you via the newsfeed. And this is a huge caveat because the whole page, the whole wall will refresh. And then the very top one where it says the friend activity, the friend activity is if I were to come to the business page, well, let's say one of you were to come to my business page. When you come on my page, you're going to see in the top right-hand corner underneath these applications, all of the friends who have liked my business page and or engaged with my page. So that gives an added social proof that I might be your social media marketer of choice, especially because your friends have already chosen me. So be sure and check out these different dropdowns because they have different functions. And by connecting and responding with these fans, by looking at the posts by others, you can build their trust for your dental office, for your real estate business, for your storefront business by turning them from fans into paying customers and raving advocates of your brand. When you get to know them and you don't just push out your content, you now pull back and you listen to them and you get to know what are their pain points and how does your pain points meet the need of how you now can solve the problem by delivering your service or your product. And let's look at number four. We're going to think strategy for a timeline cover and a welcome app. So while Facebook can help advance your marketing agenda, it can help you with leads, promotions, brand awareness, new patients, new prospects, you want to start with the strategy behind your page's timeline cover and a welcome page to generate more consistent and robust results. Have a few variations of a well-designed cover banner to make your dental office stand out from competitors. And you can start with a simple one and then change it out on occasion to showcase events, maybe new services, a flash promotion. And remember that you can always quickly create a new timeline cover banner by visiting our design category in the Suma Social app. You can do as many as you like, and you can change it out on a regular basis, maybe once a week, maybe that's what you do on Mondays. But here's the thing too, is that so often, and it's and the strategy or the percentage now is about 90% of everyone who sees your content is viewing it from their news feed. So they're not coming to your wall. It would be nice, but they're not. That means that every time you change out your cover banner, it is stamping your wall as a new post, feeding through your news feed, and now it has in a very engaging opportunity to call to attention all of your fans. And remember that the number one element shared on Facebook is a photo, a photograph. So you might look really pretty here like uh, Dr. Carol McGonigal, but if, if this is what she's had for the last six months and she's not changed it, she's not taken the opportunity to engage this content or these valuable assets like what's in this circle here and tell them what's her value proposition. So if she were to create an additional one or two relative to timely contests or coupons 
or or events or the fact that maybe she's a marathon runner and that maybe her team actually ran uh, in PF Changs, the, the clients won't know that because they won't see it through their news feed. So you really have a valuable marketing opportunity here with this timeline. Then look at under the timeline cover and you can really get aggressive with the custom welcome pages to drive traffic and reinforce your brand's promotion with a direct call to action, which means a like or opt-in exchanged for a coupon, a contest, a quick appointment, a free MLS search, a scheduler, a review. And FYI here, every welcome page has its own URL. And so having an action behind every custom app helps you generate targeted leads. And as you can see here in this example, I have circled what she has as her, her welcome page, called her homepage, but she reinforces that title up here in this yellow circle. To find out how to improve your smile, you want to click on that. And that gives people a direct correlation to identifying a pain point, and here is the service that can solve it. And then over here, she's running a, an iPad contest for all new fans. So whenever they have a chance to click on that, enter their name and address, email address, then they get entered into the iPad contest, but she also gets the generation of these new leads. And these leads will be found in the back dashboard of the Summa Social app, and it's under your convert, and it lists in, in a, kind of like an Excel spreadsheet layout exactly the, the names of the people, first and last, their email address, where the lead was generated from, and in this case, it's a sweepstakes, and how you can follow up with them. Often they can ask you a question, and then now you've not only given them the value of a possibility to win a new iPad, but you have an opportunity to follow up. So with the strategy behind your cover banner and you welcome pages, you really provide a clear incentive to get more clicks, more likes, and definitely more conversion. Let's look at your insights. Facebook marketing, unlike what we often think with traditional marketing, is not a set it and forget it tool. It takes time and it takes technique to really identify the best way to engage, to educate, and entertain your target market and develop business building relationships. To gauge your social media traction, you can visit your insights dashboard to see all the traffic analytics associated with your business page. And you can access it from one of two places within your admin panel. Here you can see with this purpley blue arrow, you, it just appears at the very top of your admin panel. It gives you a very limited scope of what's happening. And then for a more elaborate, you can either click see all in this yellow, or you can go straight up to edit page, the drop down will appear, click on update, and that takes you to a refresh page whereby you can click on insights and it's free. It's available to pay all the page administrators for your specific page. So for a quick reference to what's working and really what's not, you can check out the overview tab for the last 28 days of posts. Here, you can see the exact number of likes, comments, and shares per post, then duplicate more of those specific engaging posts and less of the flat ones. You can also go back there and see the exact number of new fans, where are they coming from, either it's from different countries or where are they coming from within the state of Arizona, maybe the country of America, what's the the demographic between, between male and female, what's the age demographic, and they isolate all of that for you. So it really either affirms what you know your, your target market to be, or it illuminates your target market. For us, we were finding more and more of our clients were actually coming from Canada, or new fans rather, were coming from Canada up in Toronto. And, and we realized after we kind of dialed into it a little bit that we had a lot of very happy customers who were up there and they were attending some conventions, their, their colleagues and oftentimes their fans were asking them, how did you do your page? They then recommended us and we were generating more, more likes for our business page and then we were generating more conversion. So it really was an, a great opportunity that had we not looked at our insights, 
we probably wouldn't have jumped on it. We never would have intuitively have thought that a lot of our new fans are coming from Canada. So that's a huge asset. With these five common pitfalls that are sure to hinder a practice's successful uh, setup, you move yourself from selling and telling, which is traditional, traditional media, um, traditional marketing, to building relationships, which is a little bit more moving from digital to that of social media. And really, relationships are just a call back to the old warm fuzzy of shaking people's hands. It's live. And it allows us now to avoid the pitfalls so that we can have that blissful Facebook launch. And now, guys, it is your turn. I'm going to answer any of your questions as we head in here. And you can, you can just ask me general questions. I'm going to unmute you in the next couple seconds. Ask me your, share with you your biggest pet peeve. Share with me some of the things that have really worked with you. And just go ahead and ask away. Here we go. We're unmuting everybody. Anybody got some uh, questions? No, this is, uh, this is Joel. I think you, you may have seen the previous question I wrote. It's not relevant to today's discussion, um, and we can save it till another time if you like. But okay, that's, that's the current question. The, set, the, the question that is relevant is under the about section. When we talk about putting a hot link there, I hit about on my profile page, and did they have that hot link under employer or what? What did they do? Because I don't see a place after I hit about to, to just type something in like a hot link to now, my website, for example. Oh, oh to your a hot link or, to your or, website or well, no, a hot to, link to, to, a to business, your business page. The business page, I'm sorry. Okay, so when you go into, you click on the about and then the very first, if you've, have you uh, identified where you work at? Because there's that fillable uh, blank right. that says where you work at. And when you right. let, Okay, so then you can type in the exact title, not a link. Uh, it has to be the exact title with spaces between words of your business page. And then that will drop down. Facebook will recognize that page. It will appear in a drop down. You just click on that. And then that link, uh, that, that page becomes a hyperlink nested within that about presence. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, no. it does. Uh, Facebook, unfortunately, only allows you to put one employer in there. So instead of, you know, I kind of, as people search for me, they sometimes yes. they do it by, you know, former coworkers and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was, I was hesitant to let that go because I'll lose that searchability from pre previous jobs. So I think that's, I don't think I can have multiple employers in, in there, but. Uh, I'm just checking right now. Let me just do a quick little search up here and see if that's a possibility. I believe you can have past jobs. Where'd you go to school? Where have yeah, you worked? Yeah, it does. It does. I'll, I'll just try. I'll just try it. And... I would, and, and it, it may. It may recognize only one note within that hyperlink, and obviously you would want to make sure that you you keep your real estate business up at the top. But I'm with you. It, you are uh, you are a collection of the strength of your background. You're not just this brand new business, so you don't want you know to lose, just, lose sight of that. I just figured I, all you have to do. I didn't realize all you have to do is type another job in there, and it just it stacks them in there, so it does work. I appreciate that. You're welcome. The other. Um, was the other question, do you want to wait on that one, the one I typed in earlier, or is this a good time to talk about it? Yeah, that's good. See, so your question was, how do I share a link or a picture from a website to my business page only? Yeah, so, so sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm do, you know, in real estate, so I see some good articles or maybe some photos that I'd like to share, but I don't want to burden my friends and my other page. I only want to post it to my fan page where people have, who people are interested in seeing those things. So. I know on those on those websites, I see a share, and then I hit share. It says post to Facebook, and I, I I'm reluctant to do it because I I think that's not going to go to my business page. <laughs> you know, it'd be really super great if Facebook would differentiate be the share between your Facebook personal profile and your business page, <laughs> or even your group. Yeah. But unfortunately, it doesn't do that. You're right that share automatically goes to your personal profile. So. 
kind of a workaround, but obviously it takes a little bit of work, is to be able to go to the browser whereby you have that unique URL, which has identified either that article, that blog, or the photograph, copy that, and then, and then put that inside. Oops, I hear my echo. So then go ahead and post that within the new status update for your business page. And that's yeah, the best that way makes... to do it. And then also, Joel, if you wanted to be a little bit of uh, efficient, and I know with the engineering mind of you, you're all about efficiency. So you could kind of spend the, maybe 30 minutes to an hour just kind of breezing through some sites that are very interesting. You're realizing maybe three, four, five are great. You'd love to share them. Then go ahead and go back to the Summa Social Dashboard click on engage and you can load up and schedule all of your content to either post solely to your business page or both to your business page and your personal profile. And, and that way you've got it scheduled, it's stamping out and you do it one time and then you don't have to do it every single day. It's a lot more efficient. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, Anybody else have any other questions? Dana, I see you're on here. Patty. Um, I'm good right now. This is Patty. Okay. And Patty, we're meeting tomorrow, so we you can save anything uh, and we can customize it for you tomorrow. Thank you. So, well, everybody, thanks so much for joining me. And if you if we've overlooked any, uh, any questions, feel free to post them on our wall. That's Summa Social. Or you can just go inside of the group. That's Summa Social Elite and then ask your questions. And the nice thing about participating in the group, guys, is that if I don't get a chance to have that immediate answer, so often the colleagues within the group will take the opportunity to share their insight or their wisdom, and they might even answer it, especially from a different industry. And, and that, that bonding allows you to see a different industry re respond to your question and have a different solution. So, if you've overlooked any of these five core success strategies, then go ahead and apply them for results. They're just going to make, uh, they will make a, a branding difference for you. And over time, they will allow you to go from simple design to inviting your target audience to engaging and then for ultimate conversion. So thanks everybody for joining us. Have a wonderful afternoon. Sure appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. You're welcome.